بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم ٹو سندھ بایو ٹیکنالوجی ایسوسیشن سو ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو لرن اباؤٹ ڈی این اے فنگر پرنٹنگ واٹ از ڈی این اے فنگر پرنٹنگ ڈی این اے فنگر پرنٹنگ از ون آف دا گریٹ ڈسکوریز آف لیٹ ٹوینٹی ایتھ سینچری اٹ ہیز میڈ گریٹ ریولیوشن ان فورینزک انویسٹیگیشن وچ ہیلپ ٹو فائنڈ کرمنلس identify victims of crime, disaster and war. Basically, it is a laboratory technique which is used to establish the link between biological evidences and suspect in criminal investigation. In easy words, what we do, we take DNA sample from a crime scene and compare it with a DNA sample of a suspect. If these two DNA profiles are matched, then the evidence came from that suspect. Likewise, if DNA profile do not match, that means evidence doesn't come from that suspect. It also helps in paternity testing. DNA fingerprinting, also known as DNA typing, DNA profiling, genetic fingerprinting, genotyping, or identity testing. In genetics, it is the method of isolating and identifying variable elements within the base pair sequence of DNA. The process of profiling it is developed by a person named as Glassberg with a sample of individual's DNA. DNA can be extracted from samples such as blood or saliva. In this picture, we have taken the DNA sample from blood. The DNA is extracted from blood cells. In point 3, we did RFLP analysis. That means DNA is collected from cells, cut into small pieces using restriction enzymes. This generates DNA of different sizes as a consequence of variation between DNA sequence of different individuals. Then in point 4, the DNA fragments are separated into bands during electrophoresis in agarose gel. The DNA band pattern in gel is transferred to a nylon membrane by a technique known as southern blotting the radioactive dna probe is added then the dna probe binds to a specific dna sequence on the membrane at this stage we use washing the excess dna probe is washed off in point 9 the radioactive probe is bound to the DNA pattern on the membrane. Then we use X-ray film that is placed next to the membrane to detect the radioactive pattern. Then the X-ray film in last step, 11th one. The X-ray film is developed to make visible pattern of band which is known as DNA fingerprinting. Then the DNA is compared to other DNA sample. So these are the steps of DNA fingerprinting. In summary, what we had done, we extract the DNA from cells, cut the DNA using enzymes into various different sizes, separate the DNA fragments on the gel, then transfer the DNA onto the paper, by adding radioactive probe so that it can be visible while we are x-ray filming it and then set up the x-ray film. We did this process by various methods like we have AFLP, RFLP, STRs, PCR and many others. So one by one we will discuss about these processes how we make DNA profiles, how we did it. So number one is AFLP, Amplified Fragment Length Polymorphism. It was put into practice during early 90s. 
this technique was faster than RFLP and used PCR to amplify DNA samples. It relied on variable number tandem repeats, VNTR, polymorphism to distinguish between various alleles, which were then separated on polyacrylamide gel using allylic ladder. After that, we have RFLP, that is restriction fragment length polymorphism. DNA is collected from the cells and cut into smaller pieces using restriction enzymes. This generates DNA fragments. As a consequence of variation between different DNA sequences of different individuals, the fragments are then separated on the basis of size using gel electrophoresis. After that, we are having STR, short tandem repeats. This method uses highly polymorphic regions that have short repeated sequence of DNA. Most common four bases repeats, but there are also other in lengths including three bases or four bases because unrelated people almost certainly have different numbers of repeats units. STRs can use to discriminate between unrelated individuals. So here is an example of DNA fingerprint, uh, fingerprinting while testing paternity. So here is uh, our DNA fingerprint of mom, of dad and their children. We will observe how we can, how we can see what will happen, how we can observe it. So, when a child is born, they inherit 23 chromosome from mother, 23 chromosome of father. It is very visible that DNA fingerprint uh, of mom is blue and DNA fingerprint of dad is yellow. So, child 1 and child 3, both are having yellow and blue bands. That means both child are from mom and dad. While the child 2, it is only having blue bands and there are of red bands but father is not having red bands that means uh, the child too is of mom not of dad in child 4 it is neither of mom nor of dad because it is having only green bands which is not uh, not in mother and not in father now we will discuss about the uses of DNA fingerprinting. It is used in disease diagnosis and treatment. After the discovery of DNA, our ability to diagnose disease has improved immensely. Also, one's susceptibility to a specific disease can be assessed with the aid of DNA test that we make our DNA fingerprints. It is also helpful in paternity and legal impacts. Through the assessment of DNA, the paternity of a child can be identified. Also, DNA tests are of immense importance in forensics and legal issues. How we use it in agriculture? By the discovery of DNA, it allows the breeders and farmers to cultivate animals, seeds with better resistance of disease, pests and attacks. It also allowed the farmers to grow food with more nutrition. DNA fingerprinting is considered to be a sure and best method to identify the real culprit involved in crimes, such as murder or rapes. DNA fingerprinting is also used to find original background and historical migration of a particular racial group. Benefits of DNA fingerprinting, if we talk about benefits, uh, let's talk about phylogenetics. It helps people to know more about their family. It is very helpful in phylogenetics studies like if we want to know who are our ancestors or anything, any species, 
it is very helpful to know about their ancestors or background it also helps to solve crime scenes we can know about who is culprit we can know who is suspect we can point at exact person who has made the crime it can help to determine and to prevent illness by locating the exact genes on the dna we can know we can identify that particular disease which can affect that person it can point the finger at the wrong person as we have already discussed that we can find culprit a criminal a murderer very easily so that's all for today's lecture i hope you like the video thank you for your patience